Hi there, welcome back again. Let me find my laser pointer here. Now, let's bring this all together. So we started out with this idea of the Earth, the atmosphere and the sun as a system. The idea that overall the amount of input of heat has to be equal to the amount of output of heat. So that makes sense. And the way that works is, we, we've just covered that, is via electromagnetic radiation. <clears throat> so now bringing this all together is a little complicated, but you can always go back to the same basic starting point. All of this is really because we cannot just receive heat from the sun. That can't be the end of the story. We have to send the exact same amount of heat back into space. Otherwise, there would be no stable temperature on the planet. The Earth would just get hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. Now, here we go, illustrated here. It has to be a balanced situation. Sure, this, the Earth is constantly gaining energy from the Sun by shortwave solar electromagnetic radiation. At the same time, luckily, the Earth is also constantly losing heat we are his own long wave electromagnetic radiation. And in the long term, there has to be a balance. Otherwise, we had an unstable system. And the analogy is a little bit like heating a house. If you imagine heating a house and you got the furnace running and you got the furnace running and got the furnace running, it gets hotter in your house, it gets hotter in your house. But at some point, right, the temperature of your house is not going to get any hotter anymore because at the same time you're heating, you're also losing air. Your house is leaking air. Your house is emitting electromagnetic radiation to the outside as a cooling mechanism. So that's exactly sort of what goes on on the planet. Yes, heat from the sun comes in. Shown here as these four squiggly yellow arrows. And then here we have our cooling mechanism the electromagnetic radiation emitted by the Earth and the reflected solar radiation. Let's look at this in more detail. Here's the simplified radiation balance of the planet in this chart here. Two main types of electromagnetic radiation here. First of all, we have the solar radiation. And the solar radiation is always kind of shown in yellow. That kind of makes sense. Solar radiation is also referred to as shortwave radiation. Why? Because the wavelengths are shorter, because the sun is hotter. And then you usually have in these diagrams the Earth radiation. It's also called terrestrial radiation, or long wave radiation, or infrared radiation. Right, and here you have, interestingly, the long wave radiation that the Earth's surface sends upward into the atmosphere. And then you have also the radiation that the atmosphere sends out, both back down to the surface of the Earth, we call that the greenhouse effect, and into outer space to balance the overall energy balance of the planet. We got to look at that into a little bit more detail. Right. There we go. So this is the chart from your from your book. Um, you can Google this as well. You can Google radiation balance. You can Google energy balance. You can do all that and you find a lot of these charts. And you got to realize that even though they're really complicated, they're still simplified, right? And they also only show the average global situation. But nonetheless, we'll use this figure because that's the one that you have. And again, um, don't get lost in the details, right? The details are important and we'll step through them today and on Wednesday. But again, let's zoom out and just look at the big picture. Here we have the sun and you can sort of imagine the sun sending us a hundred units or a hundred percent of heat. That makes sense because all heat from that we use for life ultimately comes from the sun. So that's plus 100. Now somehow we have to balance that out, right? We have to get rid of a hundred units. And we do so in three ways. Number one here, we lose 31 units by reflection. We get, we use 31 units of electromagnetic radiation that's emitted to space by the atmosphere. And then eight units 
which is emitted by the Earth's surface that just travels through the atmosphere. 31 plus 61 plus 8 is 100. A, we're balanced. Right? I mean, that is really the main point of, of this whole story, that we have a balance. And now we'll look into more detail what happens as that radiation, as that energy travels through the atmosphere. Right? And usually, again, these things, these charts are usually split up between one side showing you the short wave or solar balance, which is usually shown in yellow. And usually on the other side, you have the long wave balance or terrestrial balance or, or earth balance or infrared balance. And that's usually shown in, in red. All right, let's start uh, with the short wave. Balance. All right, here we go. Here we have our sun. We, here we are, we get 100 units from uh, uh, electromagnetic radiation energy from the sun. Well, 31% or 31 units get immediately reflected uh, back into space, either by the surface of the Earth or by the atmosphere. Those 31 units do not heat up anything, they just get reflected. You can, for example, think about the tops of clouds, right? Because obviously the tops of clouds are highly reflective and will shoot uh, energy right back into space. 24% of the heat from the sun is absorbed by the atmosphere, whether it's by dust, by ozone, by clouds, by water vapor. Actually, most of this is actually absorbed in the stratosphere by the ozone in the stratosphere. And it heats up the stratosphere and heats up the atmosphere a little bit. And finally, 45% or 45 units of the original heat from the sun that arrives at the top of the atmosphere makes it all the way through the atmosphere and arrives at the Earth's surface and is absorbed by the Earth's surface. That's the short wave or the solar radiation balance of the planet. Now, what happens at the Earth's surface? Well, at the Earth's surface, that solar radiation is absorbed. The energy that's transported by this electromagnetic radiation is exchanged. And in turn, the surface of the Earth is heated up and becomes warmer. And then as step four, the Earth's surface then heats up the overlying cooler atmosphere from the bottom. That's the short wave radiation balance of the planet. Again, stepping through this, solar radiation enters the atmosphere. Now again, some of it, about a third, 31%, comes in, gets reflected, goes out again. Doesn't do anything doesn't heat the atmosphere, doesn't heat the Earth's surface. Some of it makes it all the way down to the Earth's surface and is reflected back into space from highly reflective surfaces such as snow. Once again, these two parts here, the reflected parts, they don't do much. They come in, they get reflected and go back out. A relatively small amount of radiation is actually absorbed by the atmosphere directly and heats up the atmosphere a little bit. But the vast majority or overwhelming majority, maybe I should say it that way, of the solar energy reaches the Earth's surface, warms the Earth's surface, and then in turn the warm Earth's surface heats up the overlying cold atmosphere from below. That's the key part. You got a hot surface, you got a cold liquid on top. That's exactly what you see outside in the atmosphere. Hot Earth's surface, cooler air, and the cooler air gets heated from below. That's the short wave radiation balance of the planet. Now, here's an animation which probably won't work on, on, your, on, your, uh, on the online video, but I'll run it anyways and talk through it and I'll show it to you in class on Wednesday if it doesn't work. The short wave energy budget, let's let it go. Really, the same information as you just saw in the static graphic, in the static diagram, here just animated. So here we have, once again, the short wave for solar radiation budget of the planet. Fine. Now, Let's move onward to, the, to this side here, the long wave balance. 
where you see a lot of weird things going on, a lot of lines, a lot of arrows going all kinds of all over the place. Again, details we'll talk about. Um, big picture is what's most important. All right, let's, let's look at the big picture. Well, first of all, we have 8% or 8 units of Earth's long wave radiation, Earth's long wave electromagnetic radiation that just leaves the Earth's surface, travels straight through the atmosphere and is lost into outer space, which is awesome because we need it to cool the planet, right? Now then, it, oh, did we go the right way? Here we go. Now let's simplify this. Let's really look at the most important stuff. Here's a great diagram showing you exactly the same thing as, as in the other diagram. It's just simplified, right? But the main story is the same. We have our solar radiation. The sun sends out electromagnetic radiation. It travels through the atmosphere. A little bit of it heats up the atmosphere, but mostly it heats up the Earth's surface. And then the Earth's surface heats the atmosphere by emitting electromagnetic radiation. And here's your atmosphere, your greenhouse gases, your clouds, and that gets heated up in the process. That makes some sense. Now, here's the cool part. The atmosphere is like the best thing ever because the atmosphere gives us two super critical things. On one hand, the atmosphere, if you imagine the atmosphere as this layer, and the atmosphere here is the greenhouse gases, the dust, the dirt, the clouds, all of that stuff. First of all, it acts like a blanket or like a trap. It takes all that electromagnetic radiation. Well, not all of it. Some of it goes through the atmosphere. But most of that electromagnetic radiation that the Earth sends upwards into space gets trapped by the atmosphere. The atmosphere sends it straight back down to us, which heats up the surface of the Earth. We call that the greenhouse effect, and that's the only reason why Earth is habitable. Otherwise, Earth would look like Mars. But the real cool part of this is that the top of the atmosphere, the upper part, the upper layer of the atmosphere, the upper side of the atmosphere, the one that we don't see from, from Earth, the upper part, also sends electromagnetic radiation into space. And that's our cooling effect. That's our cooling mechanism. So it's an incredible system. That thing we call atmosphere, that thin layer that surrounds the Earth, giving us two absolutely critical functions without which life on planet Earth couldn't exist the way we know it. All right. So we got our atmosphere. It's heated from the bottom by the surface of the Earth. It acts as a blanket, sends most of that heat straight back to us. That's the greenhouse effect. Hooray, we love the greenhouse effect, at least the natural greenhouse effect because it gives us a livable temperature on the planet. But also, and here's the cool part, at the same time, that heat is sent into space, cooling the planet, giving us an overall balance of energy coming in versus energy going out. Super awesome. Now, let's, in part four, see how this works out on a typical day. Let's take a typical sunny day in the fall and see how all that plays out. We'll see you in part four.